Good afternoon all. A spoon with a computer in it. So I bought this from Lidl. Let's open it up and have a look at this spoon with a computer in it. It's a, it's quite a large spoon. <laughs> in fact, I'll go and get a tablespoon. This is marked in tablespoons. I'll get a tablespoon for comparison. Um, this is a dessert spoon. I think this is probably a, a tablespoon. This actually is marked in tablespoons and milliliters. So one tablespoon, two and three. So I think the capacity of this cup is three tablespoons um, or 45 milliliters. We can try that. We can put some water in it later. But uh, let's switch it on. What can you see on there? Um, yeah, 0, 0.0. And what this is, is just a weighing scale. So it will weigh whatever is in the cup of the bowl, I should say, of the spoon. So let's weigh this pencil eraser. And that weighs, what is it? 21.1 grams. And you can do some clever stuff. You can press Sigma and then weigh something else while well, I'll weigh the pencil eraser again. And it adds it to the previous weight. So you can do sort of totalizations of different things in the bowl of the spoon. And uh, it also does tear weight, or is it tar, tear, tar? I don't know how you pronounce that. I think it's French. Uh, if you put something in which is a container, but you want to subtract the weight of that container, you press tear, tear appears there, and then you can add additional weight and it will only weigh the weight of um, the additional bit. Pretty standard stuff for weighing scales, I believe. And there's also a hold button so that you can get a measurement, a weight, uh, press the hold button. Now, initially I couldn't see the hold symbol. It's right up there in the top corner of the display. And I think it's because this is a backlit thing, um, but it does say hold there. And so if I take that out, it will hold that weight. Uh, I suppose that could be useful. So let's see how accurate it is with some water. And we've got milliliters marked here. And of course, milliliters of water will be grams. So I'll pour in up to the 15 milliliter mark. And that's actually 20, is that 21.5? Yeah, 21.5 grams. But of course, there's a meniscus on this. So although it looks like it's on that mark, the water is actually raised up higher than that. So I'll take it on to the two, um, no, the 30 milliliters. And I've set it just below so that the top of the water level is approximately lined up with that. And yeah, we've got 31 grams. So it seems to be reasonably accurate in terms of the weight of water. Now, here's an interesting thing. I was assuming that because this is based on pressing down on this metal lever here to give the weight indication, incidentally, this goes all the way up to 300 grams. But of course, when the bowl of the spoon hits the desk, what I'm actually doing is rotating the bowl and that's pushing back up on the measuring thing but that's irrelevant what i wanted to say was i assumed that the weight of this pencil eraser there 21.2 grams would be different if i put it there but it's not really 21.1 grams so it doesn't seem to matter where the weight is if the weight's near the fulcrum or if the weight's further away from the fulcrum how is that? I can't quite figure that out. If you've got any ideas, let me know. Now, when I saw this uh, spoon with a computer in it in Lidl, it got me thinking of an image from the 19, probably the late 1960s, early 1970s. And I've actually got that picture in a book. I'll go and get it in a minute. But what I wanted to say was there are lots of things with silly computers in. And, and not so silly. I mean, here's another one. This one just measures the gap between these two uh, caliper teeth, I suppose. Tongues, I don't know what you'd call them. Um, so a very similar device. And of course, I mean, we're all used to these devices. And here's another one, and it's the same sort of thing. It's uh, got a strain gauge in it, and it's um, for weighing your suitcase when you go on holiday. Uh, so there we are. Oh, it's up the wrong way up. 
So there we are, uh, two kilograms, 1.8 kilograms. I can't remember how high this goes. Oh, I think it's held. Why does it hold? That's irritating. Um, a suitcase, that's going to be quite heavy, isn't it? So yeah, I mean, this one's got a very tough strain gauge in it, whereas this only goes up to 300 grams. And really, these days, there's nothing particularly unusual about very small, very powerful computers. This is probably the ultimate expression of that, apart from mobile phones. This smartwatch, which has um, power supply built in, of course, and in fact, there's no charging port on this. It's purely inductive charging. It also has a whole range of sensors, including MEMS, because the MEMS chip uh, recognizes these gestures. It also does the switch that back on it also does the pedometer for the steps count that you can see there um, I like this display because you've got this nice sunrise and sunset graph and I just quite like having a graph on the screen of my watch I don't wear this a lot I, I wear it if I go out I haven't been out today and so of course there are no steps clocked up but yeah this is a very powerful computer with a very comprehensive display and lots of sensors including a, a heart rate monitor and other stuff like that and some user interface uh, a couple of buttons there in a very small form factor so nothing unusual about having a computer in a spoon but it was just the stupidity <laughs> of having a spoon with a computer in it that made me think of this image and i'll go and get that picture now yes this is the mind alive encyclopedia of technology and there's a lovely picture on the front with um some rather old looking resistors and capacitors and inside this book, there's this image. And this is an image that was being put out, like I say, in probably the early 70s, saying one day in the future, um, it'll be possible to have a computer in your house. And you can see this uh, nuclear family here sitting around their dinner table with a computer in the room. It's rather large. There's a magnetic tape drive unit there oh, with some tapes stacked on top there's another mag tape unit there i don't quite even know why they needed two um central processor unit here partially blocking the window so this computer doesn't fit terribly well in um in the house and here on the left you can see a uh, part of what looks like a teletype unit but this was the image in the future you can have a computer in your home and it's really the computer in the spoon that's the first time I really thought of that image. It doesn't really happen with something useful like these calipers. But this, <laughs> I suppose this is useful, but I don't know, computer in a spoon. Yeah, it just got me thinking about the fact that really everything now has a computer in it. Um, let's take it apart. Now, I suppose some people would argue that this is not a computer as such. But I don't know. You've got input devices. You've got the strain gauge. Um, nice movement on that, quite a large movement. And you've also got the uh, user interface, which is these three buttons. You've got a display device. I suppose really the only issue is whether or not this is reprogrammable. But if we see on the PCB that this has programming points, then I suppose you could argue that this is reprogrammable. There's also ROM and RAM in here. There'll be uh, constants for the conversion factor because you can display this in... Uh, grams or ounces there'll be ram in order and there'll be lookup tables for the um, characters for the numbers that appear on the display so i would argue this is a computer let's take out these uh, tronic AAA cells and we have four screws so let's undo them screws are out but the cover isn't immediately wanting to come off has it got clips or something don't want to break that display do I? Let me try and find these clips. Right, in here there's quite a lot of space uh, allocated to this strain gauge. Big chunk of metal here and you can see a couple of enamel copper wires sort of gunked onto that and they presumably go to these wires here. Um, there are three, no four, there are four, so it's a four wire gauge. Uh, they run down onto the PCB and then annoyingly there are these two incredibly thin wires going down to the battery box which is on the other half so I can't separate these at the moment. Um, you can take the, it's not just the bowl off this metal strip, you actually pull this forked piece 
out of the strain gauge piece in there, which seems interesting. Um, I'll take some more of these screws off to see if we can see the, uh, uh, probably a blob chip on the underside of this PCB here. Right, well I seem to have got the strain gauge off the PCB on its four wires and the PCB should now come out and um, of course it's got those three switches on it hasn't it so they'll all fall out. Um, yeah let's try and get this PCB out of here but it's trapped behind these two. Oh no there we go. Oh and the display separate on zebra strips. <laughs> oh that's not good is it? Okay so the there's a little, the little holder there that holds the forked end of the spoon bowl is screwed onto the strain gauge metal work. Uh, on the PCB we have usual blob chip, a couple of pad areas for the two zebra strips for the display and then the three pad areas for the three uh, buttons. Um, four capacitors there and that's it so there's not a lot to see and actually there are no visible programming pads so possibly if you were saying no that's not a computer Julian because you can't reprogram it you might be right because I think typically these blob chips are not reprogrammable so maybe it's not a computer after all. On these wires to the sensor we've got uh, S minus S plus so sensor minus sensor plus and then we've got E plus and E minus if you know about strange strain gauges and um, that sort of sensor then that probably makes sense I can't immediately think what the difference between the S num the S connections and the E connections are but it is four wires running up to this strain gauge and there it is, it looks like and feels like it's made of aluminium. Um, so that's it really, so I'll put it back together. It might or might not work. Let's find out. Uh, two tiddly little screws, <laughs> oh dear, up at the top here, which press against the top zebra strip. So let's put those in. And then there are two screws at the bottom and then there's a center screw and then there are two additional screws that hold the strain gauge on. So let's get all those screws back on. You don't want to watch me put them all in, do you? I mean, the point is I'm blocking the view with my hand. Well, I think that's all back together apart from the uh, screws that hold the case together. So let's clip that back together. We don't need those four screws just yet. Let's get the batteries back in it and just see if it still works. Oh, it does. That's rather good. I can now use my spoon with a computer in it. Right, so I'll shove the the fork end of the spoon bowl back into there. Um, now that's showing a weight. I think when you switch the thing off, press and hold to switch it off, switch it on. I think it does a calibration to zero it to zero so that's now back to zero so what do you think um does everything have to have a microcontroller in it these days <laughs> including a spoon is this ridiculous is it getting stupid um you know if i see a fork with a computer in it or a knife with a computer in it i'll be sure to buy it and take it apart but is this daft a spoon with a computer in it let me know Cheerio.